Hey guys, Michael from Modulus here. So today I'm going to have a quick look at the hookup wire we stock in the shop and uh, hopefully get some questions answered for you as to how to select the right wire for the Ampere building. And uh, let's get to it. Right, what we've got here is tri-rated cable. And you can see the different colors here as we just go through that. And what the tri-rated part means is um, it meets three different standards. Uh, so basically that's BS or British standards, UL or underwriters and CSA, which is Canadian standards. Uh, and that means that it meets the North American and European wiring regulations. This is the wire we supply with our kits for most of the hookups in it. Um, it's 22 AWG or American wire gauge. Um, it's got a thicker PVC insulation than normal PVC type wire. And um, it's pretty good uh, if it, for holding its shape because of the insulation. Um, you can run it straight or you can run it with nice curves uh, and it looks tidy. The other type of wire we supply in our kits is this thin solid core wire. It's in the shop as a, as a thousand volt wire. Now, I only use this for on the board links or on the board uh, hookups uh, between turret to turret. What I'll sometimes do with it though is also strip a large part of it off just to run top links, um, say connecting different filter cap uh, grounds and things like that. Um, it's quite good for that and quite easy to use. So th those are the two main wires we suggest you use uh, and covers most bases. Um, the next two wires are kind of speciality wires. <coughs> so this is cloth insulated wire. Now this isn't exactly the same as the stuff that Fender used in the 50s and 60s because they used pushback wire, which was wire you could grab and pull the cloth back to get access to it, which meant no stripping, you just pulled it back and sold it and away you went, which would have been quite quick for production. The problem with, with um, cloth wire, uh, in particular that sort of style of cloth wire was um, the old British European guidelines for building amplifiers basically indicated cloth wire shouldn't be used unless it met certain standards. Uh, that was obviously for voltage and rot, um, flame retardant issues as well. So this this has a cloth, this wire we have here has a cloth outer, but it actually has a PVC inner layer. So when you strip it, you actually have to strip the, the two layers and the PVC layer gives it the modern standards, um, uh, it helps it meets, meet the modern standards um, and the cloth gives it that authentic vintage look. The next wire is this Teflon insulated wire. It's a harsh environment, high temperature wire uh, and it's got stranded um, a stranded core to it. Uh, Teflon is really great for working with as it, the insulation doesn't really melt, but we'll get onto that in a bit more. Okay, so that's the main wires we have in the shop that you can choose from. Um, there's a few things you need to consider when choosing wire and let's, the first one we'll look at is what type of uh, core is actually uh, in the wire. So this is a stranded wire core and that's a solid wire core. So these two on the side are both solid wire and these two are both stranded. Now the advantage of a stranded is if there's a fault in any of the strands the wire will keep conducting and it's not going to break in that point. So um, for instance if you were stripping the wire and you accidentally nicked a couple strands it's not going to um, cause a, a weak point in that wire in the same way that it would if you were stripping solid core wire. If I strip the solid core wire and you know I cut through that just a little bit it won't take long before I bend it and it breaks just like I've just done there. Um, I stripped that with a standing knife and as you can see that broke very very easily. So you have to be very very careful when stripping solid core wire to not nick the wire. don't know if the camera will pick this up but I've actually deliberately put a little nick in there that, that you could break. So that's that's one of the issues of solid core wire and um, the good thing about solid core wire is it holds its shape if you bend it. Um, so if you wanted to wrap it around as a coil to, um, you know, you could you can actually wrap it as a coil to shield another wire if you wanted to. Um, it's quite good for that sort of thing. But if you wanted perfectly straight wire or perfectly straight looking wire in your build, it's quite good for holding a shape that way. Okay, so those are the main considerations for the type of copper core you have.
Right, the next thing to consider is what gauge of wire do I, do I need? And when we talk about gauge, it's really about uh, the current carrying capacity of the wire. Now, most high voltage circuits inside an amplifier don't need anything more than an amp of current capacity. So all of these wires are suitable for high voltage um, current capacity. Uh, where current becomes a bigger problem is in the heater winding. And you'll often see guys online saying what you know, looking for information on what size gauge they need to use for their their heater currents. Now, it's okay, so for heater wires, um, the easiest thing to do is to look at the data, sh data sheets for the valves you're going to be using and look up the current that the heaters take. Uh, it's almost always in all the data sheets. Uh, and you can just add them up and that'll tell you how much current you have. And then you can just use the wire specs or the, or the wire data sheets to look up to see whether the wire is suitable. But for most wiring and most amps under 50, 50 watts, um, 22 gauge is sufficient. Uh, if you're not sure though, the best thing to do is to look at your power transformer. And your power transformer will have, if it's got flying leads on it, um, check the writing on the flying leads. The flying leads will normally tell you what gauge of wire they're made with. Um, and that's what you should use as an absolute bare minimum for starting off. So for instance, this is a 100 watt power transformer for a Marshall style amp. It's got 18 gauge wire for the heaters. So what I would do for this one is run 18 gauge to the to the uh, the power valve sockets, and then when I go to the preamp sockets, I would then change now to 22 gauge. And the reason I would reduce it is because it's much easier to fit 22 gauge to the preamp sockets. Um, I think trying to squeeze 18 gauge into preamp sockets would just be uh, more pain than it's worth, to be honest. So, so. That's always the, the place to look. If you're not sure, really, just check, check to see what's on your power transformer and use that as a starting point. Okay. Right, the next thing is voltage rating. So all of the wire we stock in the shop is suitable for high voltage amplifiers, meaning uh, up to 500 volts um, or 600 volts, as the case may be for some of them. Uh, that's per the specs of the wire. Um, some people will tell you you can use 300 volt wire, uh, which you absolutely can, and, and particularly for um, lower lower wattage amps like uh, two EL84 type amps, it's, it should be fine. Um, but the the voltage rating is defined as the voltage that the insulation may start to break down. Now, that's between the core and the next thing next to it. So. If I've got 300 volts, 300 volt rated cable next to a chassis that's at zero volts and I'm running 500 volts through it, then you're going past the rating of that wire. So if you're trying to build it to the correct spec, then you should make sure that uh, really the insulation that you're using is rated higher than the actual voltage in the amp. Okay, so let's look at uh, insulation type. So. We've got three different types of insulation here. We've got PVC uh, with these two. Uh, this is PVC with a cloth outer, and that's got Teflon on it. Now, uh, the best insulation is the Teflon one. Uh, it's really a harsh environment uh, insulation. It's really great because if you're soldering a terminal to it or soldering it onto, um, onto a turret, it can take a huge amount of heat and the insulation won't melt back. Uh, and that's a typical sort of issue with PVC type wire is if you overheat it, um, the insulation gets soft close to the joint and it may actually deform or come away from the wire. Now it takes quite a bit of heat to do that to the tri-rated cable because it's got a thicker insulation, but um, on the thinner stuff, that insulation is quite a lot thinner, so it can actually melt back quite a bit easier. So it really depends on how good you are with your soldering iron. Uh, I mean, there's no issue using these wires uh, but from a, and from cost point of view, they're, they're um, more attractive. But from the point of view of you know just getting a really nice joint, not worrying about whether the insulation is going to melt back, the Teflon is great for that. Okay, the cloth covered wire is. I mean that's really just for those guys who are going after the vintage look. Um, I think I said this before about the cloth is. Uh, it's really just a cosmetic thing. It actually has a PVC inner that's doing doing the core insulating work for this cable. 
Okay, there was actually a, a guy that um, was on Facebook saying he managed to ignite his amp that was full of cloth covered wire. I don't know what cloth covered wire he was using. Uh, I don't think it was this stuff. The stuff can burn, um, but it takes quite a lot of heat to get it going. So, uh, you know, it needs like an open flame and, and you know, 10 seconds in an open flame to get going. So I've got no idea what he did to do that, but um, voila. Okay, so let's look at some strippers you could use for stripping the wire. Uh, first of all, we'll just look at these ones. These are the sort of thing you would typically find in a hardware shop, um, in the electrical section, which is intended for home wiring. Or, and uh, you'll see the smallest wire size it's meant to do is 0.75, um, which is pretty large for most amplifier wiring. Um, so really, these are not the sorts of things you should be looking for. Um, Besides that, the stripping part is over here, which if you're working in a small chassis, there's no way you're going to get that anywhere near uh, inside the chassis if you need to. So uh, I wouldn't even consider that sort of thing. This is uh, another fairly cheap and cost effective type of wire stripper. You set the depth of the cut or the wire size by positioning this bolt. Um, it's not overly accurate, but for stripping some PVC wires and things, it, it can be quite good. Um, they work quite well. This is a quick and easy thing for stripping wire. Uh, a proper tool, it's got a, a depth set setting on it. And you can adjust how hard it grips the wire um, using this. Uh, the only thing is with these is because it's got these teeth here that um, it can actually grip and leave a mark on the wire. So if you're fussed about that, then uh, you maybe won't like these. So it's about just getting the settings right for it though. Um, if I'm stripping a lot of um, the tri-rated wire, I tend to use these. Um, this is a stripper that I use for, uh, particularly for the Teflon wire. Um, it's designed for Teflon wire. So it's got a, a small hole in this end for the wire to go through um, and it strips it without uh, cutting any other strands inside the wire. Uh, it also works pretty well on the solid solid core PVC wire we have here because it's got a, quite a thin insulation on it. So uh, th that's the sort of thing I'd recommend. Um, th obviously there's a lot more out there but um, these are pretty easy to get at most sort of um, decent hardware shops or online electrical retailers. Okay guys hopefully that was helpful for you. If you have any questions just let us know. Uh, there's obviously lots of different types of wire out there and uh, you just need to go look at the data sheets and try and make sure that what you're using is safe to be used. Okay, cheers!